Hello, welcome back to learning how to solve systems of linear equations in algebra by substitution. So in the last section we learned the general idea. Here we're just going to work a few additional problems and we'll have some more problems in the next lesson to give you even more practice. I very much encourage you, when you, even though you've watched me solve all of these problems, when this lesson is over, get your own paper out and solve them yourself. Just write the problems down and solve them yourself. It doesn't matter if you've watched me solve them, but going through those motions of doing it yourself will really help you understand. So let's take a look at the system of equations and see how we would solve it. What if the system was 6x plus 5 times y equals negative 2? That's equation number 1. And the other part of the system is 2x plus 3y is equal to 6. So what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to solve this equation, the system of equations, two different ways. The first way is going to be exactly, well, it's almost exactly the same way, but I, there's a small thing I want to point out that's actually very, very important for you to understand. What we're first going to do is we're going to solve one of these guys for x, and then we'll plug that guy into the other equation. We'll find y, and then once we find y, we will turn around and find the, the numeric answer for x as well. Now, let me reiterate something. When you're looking at a system of equations, you want to take something from the first equation and plug it into here. But you have the choice of you can solve this for x and then plug it into the spot for x, or you could solve this equation for y and then substitute it in for the y value and then go from there. Now that's one couple strategies. Or you can choose to not solve on this equation, just work on this equation, solve this one for x, in that case you would put it into the x spot, or then you can solve it separately, totally different way, for y, and then plug it into the y. The point is, is there's lots of different ways to solve problems. All you need to do is pick an equation, solve that equation for something, and then put that into the spot of the other equation, substituting it in, and then you continue the solution from there. There is no right way. Um, I can do it four different ways. I just outline them here on the board. I could solve this for this, put it in here, put this for that for that. It, it doesn't matter which way you pick. You're going to find the correct answer. So a lot of times it comes down to just which one looks a little easier to deal with or which one you just choo happen to choose. So for this case, I'm going to happen to choose the second equation just to show you that I don't have to use the first equation. And also, in most of the other problems, I've been solving for y and then putting y in. In this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to solve first for x, and I'm going to put it over here just to show you that it's totally fine to do that. So if we're going to solve for x, this will be 2x is equal to negative 3y um, plus 6. All I did was subtract 3y, subtract 3y from both sides. And then now I have to divide by 2. So x will be negative 3y over 2 plus 6 over 2. You just take the right-hand side, divide by 2, and of course that's the same as dividing each term by 2. And then finally what you're going to get for x is, writing it uh, a little bit more friendly, negative 3 halves is the coefficient in front of y, and then plus 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that's the value that we have for x. Whatever x is, for the intersection point of these two graphs, here is what it is in terms of the y variable. Now, whatever you solve for by whichever equation you pick, you then take it and stick it in and plug it into the other equation. So I'm going to put pi, that means plug in. And when, I, when I'm drawing an arrow, I'm not pointing to the two, I'm pointing to the whole equation. You put it in whatever position is, uh, is supposed to go in over here. So what I'm going to do is say it goes into the x spot. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have enough space because this is not very much space to put this whole thing here, in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue this down below and say that it's going to be 6 times x. But now I know that x is equal to all this stuff. So to keep it straight, you need to put it in parentheses. Or sometimes I like to use brackets just to really make it stand out. But parentheses or brackets, either one is the same thing. So here is 6 times x, where x is now known to be this. And then I have plus the 5y equals negative 2. Now, I know it looks ugly, but notice it's everything is a number except for y, and then everything else is a number except for y. So I have a single equation here to solve with a single unknown. Now, what makes it a pain is the fact that I have this fraction in here. And this fraction came about because I chose to solve this equation for x. So there's really just no avoiding that because it's 3 halves. I mean, they're, they're negative 3 halves. There's no other way to do it. Uh, it, it, to not get a fraction. If I were to solve for, for y, um, it, the equation might come out a little bit simpler. Maybe, maybe not. We could go through it that way. But in this case, I chose x. And so because I chose